Bobby Darren was an American singer, musician, and actor. He performed jazz, pop, rock and roll, folk, swing, and country music. He started his career as a songwriter for Connie Francis. He recorded his first million-selling single, Splish Splash, in 1958. That was followed by Dream Lover, Knack the Knife, and Beyond the Sea, which brought him worldwide fame. In 1962 he won a Golden Globe Award for his first film, Come September, co-starring his first wife, actress Sandra Dee. During the 1960s, he became more politically active and worked on Robert F. Kennedy's Democratic presidential campaign. He was present on the night of June 4, 5, 1968, at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles at the time of Robert Kennedy's assassination. During the same year, he discovered the woman who had raised him was his grandmother, not his mother as he thought, and learned that the woman he thought was his sister was actually his mother. Those events deeply affected Darren and sent him into a long period of seclusion. Although he made a successful comeback in the early 1970s, his health was beginning to fail, as he had always expected, following bouts of rheumatic fever in childhood. The knowledge of his vulnerability had always spurred him on to use his musical talent while still young. He died at the age of 37 after a heart operation in Los Angeles. Walden Robert Casado was born May 14, 1936, in the East Harlem neighborhood of New York City. His maternal grandfather, Severio Antonio Big Sam Curley Casado, was a would-be mobster of Italian descent who died in prison from pneumonia a year before Darren's birth. His maternal grandmother, Vivian Fern Walden, who called herself Polly and was born in 1891, was of English ancestry. She was a vaudeville singer. Darren's birth mother, Vanina Juliet Nina Casado, became pregnant with him in the summer of 1935, when she was 17. Nina and her mother hatched a plan to pass her baby off as Nina's younger brother. Darren believed his mother Nina was instead his elder sister and that Polly, who had raised him from birth, was his mother. In 1968, when he was 32 and considering entering politics, Nina told him the truth, reportedly devastating Darren. She refused to reveal the identity of his biological father, and kept that secret to her death in 1983. By the time he was a teenager, Darren could play several instruments, including piano, drums, and guitar. He later added harmonica and xylophone. Darren moved to the Bronx early in his life and graduated from the prestigious Bronx High School of Science. In later years he attributed his arrogance to his experiences there, where he was surrounded by brighter students who teased him. He then enrolled at Hunter College and soon gravitated to the drama department. After only two semesters, he dropped out to pursue an acting career. Bobby took the name of Darren when he began to record, adapting it from the first name of actor Darren McGavin, TV's Mike Hammer, however also adding, my legal name will remain Casado. Casado was my mother's name. And it will be my children's name. Darren's career took off with a songwriting partnership, formed in 1955 with Don Kirshner whom he met at a candy store in Washington Heights. They wrote jingles and songs, beginning with Bubblegum Pop. In 1956, his agent negotiated a contract with Decca Records. The songs recorded at Decca had minimal commercial success. A member of the Brill-building gang of struggling songwriters, Darren was introduced to singer Connie Francis, for whom he helped write several songs. They developed a romantic interest, but her father was not fond of Darren and did not approve of the relationship, and the couple split up. At one point, Darren wanted to elope immediately. Francis has said that not marrying Darren was the biggest mistake of her life. Darren left Decca to sign with Atlantic Records at co-subsidiary, where he wrote and arranged music for himself and others. Songs he recorded, such as Harry Warren's I Found a Million Dollar Baby, were sung in an Elvis style, which did not suit his personality. Guided by Atlantic star maker Ahmed Erdogan, Darren's career finally took off in 1958 when he recorded Splish Splash. He co-wrote the song with radio DJ Murray Kaufman after a phone call from Kaufman's mother, Jean, a frustrated songwriter. Her latest song idea was, Splish, Splash, Take a Bath. Both Kaufman and Darren felt the title was lackluster, but Darren, with few options, said I could write a song with that title. Within one hour, Darren had written Splish Splash. The single, Darren's first successful foray into the rock and roll genre, sold more than a million copies. His partnership with Kirshner, who was not involved in the writing of that song, ended at that time. He made another recording in 1958 for Brunswick Records with a band called the Ding Dongs. 
With the success of Splish Splash the single was re-released by Atco Records as early in the morning with the band renamed as the Rinky Dinks. It charted, and made it to number 24 in the United States. In 1959, Darren recorded the self-penned Dream Lover, a ballad that became a multi-million seller. With it came financial success and the ability to demand more creative control of his career. So he meant for his That's All album to show that he could sing more than rock and roll. His next single, Mac the Knife, the standard from Kurt Vile's Three Penny Opera, was given a vamping jazz pop interpretation. Although Darren was initially opposed to releasing it as a single, the song went to no. One on the chart for nine weeks, sold two million copies, and won the Grammy Award for Record of the Year in 1960. Darren was also voted the Grammy Award for Best New Artist that year, and Mac the Knife has since been honored with a Grammy Hall of Fame award. Darren followed Mac with Beyond the Sea, a jazzy English-language version of Charles Trenet's French hit song La Mer. Both tracks were produced by Atlantic founders Ahmet and Nesui Erdogan with staff producer Jerry Wexler and they featured arrangements by Richard Wess. The late 1950s success included Darren setting the all-time attendance record at the Copacabana nightclub in Manhattan and headlining at the major casinos in Las Vegas. Darren's 1960 recording of Artificial Flowers, a song by Sheldon Harnick and Jerry Bach from the Broadway musical Tenderloin about the death of a child laborer. Featured a jazzy, big band arrangement by Richard B. Herc, that was in sharp contrast to its tragic lyrics. In the 1960s, Darren owned and operated, with Doris Day's son Terry Melcher, a music publishing and production company. He signed Wayne Newton and gave him the song Don Cushane, which became Newton's breakout hit. Darren also was a mentor to Roger McGuinn, who worked for him at TM Music and played the 12-string guitar in Darren's nightclub band before forming the Birds. Additionally, Darren produced Rosie Grier's 1964 LP Soul City, and made in the shade for Jimmy Boyd. In 1962, Darren began to write and sing country music, with hit songs including Things, You're the Reason I'm Living, and 18 Yellow Roses. The latter two were recorded by Capitol Records, which he joined in 1962, before returning to Atlantic three years later. Darren left Capitol in 1964. In 1966, he had his final UK hit single, with a version of Tim Hardin's If I Were a Carpenter, which peaked at no. 9. He performed the opening and closing songs on the soundtrack of the 1965 Walt Disney film That Darn Cat. Things was sung by Dean Martin in the 1967 TV special Movin' with Nancy, starring Nancy Sinatra. Dead Eye and Darren in a 1965 Red Skelton show skit in the fall of 1959, Darren played Honey Boy Jones in an early episode of Jackie Cooper's CBS military sitcom slash drama Hennessy. In the same year, he became the only actor ever to have been signed to five major Hollywood film studios. He wrote music for several films in which he appeared. His first major film, Come September, was a teenager-oriented romantic comedy with Rock Hudson and Gina Lollobrigida and featuring 18-year-old actress Sandra Dee. They met during the production of the film, and got married soon afterward. Dee gave birth to a son, Dodd Mitchell Darren on December 16, 1961. Dee and Darren made a few films together with moderate success. In 1961, he starred as a struggling jazz musician in Too Late Blues, John Cassavetti's first film for a major Hollywood studio. Writing in 2012, Los Angeles Times critic Dennis Lim observed that Darren was a surprise in his first non-singing role, willing to appear both arrogant and weak. In 1962, Darren won the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year, actor for his role in Come September. The following year he was nominated for a Best Actor Golden Globe for Pressure Point. In 1963, he was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his role as a shell-shocked soldier in Captain Newman, M.D. In October 1964, he appeared as a wounded ex-convict who was befriended by an orphan girl in the John Gilman story episode of NBC's Wagon Train Western television series. Now my attitude is very simple, I must do what artistically pleases me. Bobby Darren, 1967 Pop Chronicles interview Dean Martin Presents, the Bobby Darren Amusement Company, L.R., Dick Smothers. Tom Smothers, and Bobby Darren as the Marx Brothers Darren became more politically active as the 1960s progressed, and his musical output became more folksy. In 1966, he had a hit with folk singer Tim Hardin's If I Were a Carpenter, securing a return to the top ten after a two-year absence. Darren traveled with Robert F. Kennedy and worked on the politician's 1968 presidential campaign. 
he was with Kennedy the day he traveled to Los Angeles on June 4, 1968, for the California primary, and was at the Ambassador Hotel later that night when Kennedy was assassinated. That event, combined with learning about his true parentage, had a deep effect on Darren, who spent most of the next year living in seclusion in a trailer near Big Sur. Returning to Los Angeles in 1969, Darren started his own record label which was titled Direction Records, putting out folk and protest music. Darren wrote Simple Song of Freedom in 1969, which, in an interesting turn of events, was first recorded by Tim Harden and the song became Harden's best-selling record. Darren himself sang the song Live on several television variety shows. Of his first Direction album, Darren said, The purpose of Direction Records is to seek out statement makers. The album is solely, composed, of compositions designed to reflect my thoughts on the turbulent aspects of modern society. He later signed with Motown. Beginning on July 27, 1972, he starred in his own television variety show on NBC, Dean Martin Presents, The Bobby Darren Amusement Company, which ran for seven episodes ending on September 7, 1972. Beginning on January 19, 1973, he starred in a similar show on NBC called The Bobby Darren Show. That show ran for 13 episodes ending on April 27, 1973. Darren subsequently made television guest appearances and remained a top draw. Darren was an enthusiastic chess player. His television show included an occasional segment in which he would explain a chess move. He arranged with the United States Chess Federation to sponsor a Grandmaster tournament, which pitted him against the young Eastern Division champion Stephen Ryder, with the largest prize fund in history, but the event was cancelled after his death. In the summer of 1957, while performing in Detroit, Darren met a waitress named Lillian Sweet, who secretly gave birth to the singer's child. The baby was adopted as an infant and named Sam Tallarico. Darren married actress Sandra Dee on December 1, 1960. They met while filming come September. On December 16, 1961, they had a son, Don Mitchell Darren. Dee and Darren divorced on March 7, 1967. Darren's second wife was Andrea Yeager, a legal secretary he met in 1970 and married on June 25, 1973, after the couple had lived together for three years. Four months later, in October 1973, the couple divorced amid strain caused by Darren's worsening health problems. Darren suffered from poor health his entire life. He was frail as an infant and, beginning at age 8, was stricken with recurring bouts of rheumatic fever that left him with a seriously weakened heart. During his first heart surgery, in January 1971, he had two artificial valves implanted. He spent most of that year recovering from the surgery. During the last few years of his life, he was often administered oxygen during and after his performances on stage and screen. In 1973, after failing to take antibiotics to protect his heart before a dental visit, Darren developed sepsis, an overwhelming systemic infection, which further weakened his body and affected one of his heart valves. On December 11, he checked himself into Cedars of Lebanon Hospital in Los Angeles for another round of open-heart surgery to repair the two artificial heart valves he had received in January 1971. On the evening of December 19, a four-person surgical team worked for over six hours to repair his damaged heart. Shortly after the surgery ended in the early morning hours of December 20, 1973, Darren died in the recovery room without regaining consciousness. He was 37 years old. Darren's last wish in his will was that his body be donated to science for medical research. His remains were transferred to the UCLA Medical Center shortly after his death. In 1990, Darren was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, with singer and close friend Paul Anka announcing the honor. In 1999, Darren was voted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Songwriter Alan O'Day alluded to Darren in his recording of Mac the Knife in the song Rock and Roll Heaven, a tribute to dead musicians, which O'Day wrote shortly after Darren's death. On May 14, 2007, Darren was awarded a star on the Las Vegas Walk of Stars to honor his contribution to making Las Vegas the entertainment capital of the world and named him one of the 20th century's greatest entertainers. Fans paid for the star. Darren also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. On December 13, 2009, at its 2010 Grammy Awards ceremony, the Recording Academy awarded Darren a posthumous Lifetime Achievement Award. Bobby Darren was among hundreds of artists whose material was destroyed in the 2008 Universal Fire. In 1986, director Barry Levinson intended to direct a film based on Darren's life, and had begun pre-production on the project by early 1997. 
He abandoned the project, the rights to which were subsequently bought by actor Kevin Spacey, along with Darren's son, Dodd. The resultant biopic, Beyond the Sea, starred Spacey as Darren, with the actor using his own singing voice for the musical numbers. The film covers much of Darren's life and career, including his marriage to Sandra Dee, portrayed by Kate Bosworth. With the consent of the Darren estate and former Darren manager Steve Blauner, Beyond the Sea opened at the 2004 Toronto International Film Festival. Although Dodd Darren, Sandra Dee, and Blauner responded enthusiastically to Spacey's work and the film was strongly promoted by the studio, Beyond the Sea received mixed to poor reviews upon wide release, and box office results were disappointing. Spacey, however, was nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, Motion Picture Musical or Comedy, but the award that year went to Jamie Foxx for his portrayal of Darren's musical contemporary Ray Charles. In September 2016, Dream Lover, the Bobby Darren musical had its world premiere at Sydney Lyric Theatre, Australia. The production featured the story of Darren with an 18-piece big band. Darren was played by David Campbell. Darren had an unusual upbringing, being raised by a mother who was actually his grandmother and alongside a sister who was actually his mother, a fact he did not discover until he was 31 years old. Campbell grew up in a similar circumstance, leading Bobby's son Dodd Darren to describe Campbell as perfect for the role, stating, you have to have lived something. Like that to understand it and, Campbell, has, and I think he can relate to my dad, he can relate to the pain. Campbell made similar observations. Describing playing Darren as a cathartic experience and stating, I feel like I'm healing things during this show. The production was nominated in six categories in the 18th Helpman Awards, including for Best Musical, with Campbell receiving the Helpman Award for Best Male Actor in a Musical. Studio Albums. Thanks for watching.